Movies this year have fucking sucked. Okay, maybe I'm over-exaggerated a bit. I have seen some good movies this year, but at this point, I've seen half as many movies as I saw all of last year. Last year, my final count, even after I went to see all the Oscar-nominated movies, etc., I finished off the year at 82. I'm at 41 now. I'm gonna go see Terminator Genesis tomorrow, so that's not what I'm gonna talk about right now, but just to put things into perspective, last year, at this point, I had already seen seven of my top 12 favorite movies. I had already seen Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, 22 Jump Street, Edge of Tomorrow, Days of Future Past, The Winter Soldier, The Grand Budapest Hotel, and The Lego Movie. They had all been out by this time last year. So far this year, I have only seen four films that would have made my top 10 list last year. And here's the real kicker. R right now, as it stands, nine films would have made my top 12 list of the worst films from last year, including three that are worse than anything I saw last year. It's just been... I'm not sure if I'm picking the wrong movies or if this year just has sucked that much. You know what? I, just to pick, up my, pick myself up a little bit, here are the ones I really like this year. So let, let's just get these out of the way right now, just to cheer myself up before I get into the dregs of what has sucked this year. So, the ones I really like this year, there have been a few others that I was kind of okay with. Like, I, I enjoyed them, just not as much as I enjoyed many of the films last year. So, Inside Out. Oh, what a... Thankfully, Pixar is returning to form after, I think, three years of... including not releasing one last year, so what, four years of subpar films from them. They finally released one that actually brings back that magic that came with the Toy Story franchise, that came with The Incredibles, that came with Wall-E, that came with Ratatouille. Oh, this was just so refreshing to see a film that appeals to both kids and adults at the same time. Sure, the kids are going to like the nice pretty colors, the adults are going to get some of the humor that the, will just go right over the kids' heads, but I don't care because the kids are still going to find it funny no matter what. So, I just love this film. And then, of course, Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, oh, just, it's one long car chase, but it is freaking glorious. Just insanity throughout the entire, think about two hour plus running time. And it's just wonderful. Guy playing an electric guitar with a flamethrower while he's on top of a car and people are banging drums on him and there's so little dialogue, but the kinetic energy of it just carries it all. Ooh, loved it. Okay, next one. I know some people are going to have a little trouble with the ending. I honestly, I can overlook it because of the films it's paying homage to. Kingsman, The Secret Service. Oh, that scene in the church. Oh, Colin Firth just going completely insane and killing everybody in that church. Was, oh, Favorite scene of the year so far, bar none. Just, ah, it's so much fun watching that film. Uh, granted, that might be because I saw it immediately after one of those three, you know, that's worse than anything I saw last year. We'll get to that. you probably guess what that was, because it came out on the same day. There's your hint. Oh, I'm so glad this film came out this year, because this has seriously gone down as one of my favorite films of all time. Ex Machina. Now, I'm a computer scientist, so I might be a little bit biased towards liking something that's set in the AI world, but I walked out of that theater and thought, you know, I think I really, really liked this film. And just the more I thought about it, the more I liked it, and then I went to go see it again, and it was like, yeah, that just... Right here. Right here, too. I cannot recommend that film enough. Now, word of caution, I said last year when I was talking about boyhood, that when people say things are deliberately paced, that they mean it's boring as fuck. I'm going to have to eat a little bit of crow there, because this film, I would use the term, it's deliberately paced, but it's never boring in its pacing. Something's always happening, even if it's just something a little bit in the background. I just cannot recommend this enough. I know some of you aren't going to like it. My apologies if you don't. But personally, 
I love that film. Okay, now let's just talk about the dregs. And you, you know what? I could talk about some of the other ones I've seen that would not be worse than anything I've seen this year already. You I mean, I think I already released the video talking about frickin' Hot Pursuit. But yeah, that was not the worst film I've seen this year. I've seen three that were worse than that. Three that were worse than anything I fucking saw last year. Let's talk about them. Jupiter Ascending. Fucking awful. It was just a mess. Okay, maybe you can laugh at how bad it is, but the fact is, you're laughing at how bad it is. How fucking bad shit it is. It's just so horrible. And there, there, yeah, there's some parts that are homages to other part, other movies, but it's more like they're ripping them off as opposed to paying homage to them. I mean, there's a scene that's blatantly ripping off Brazil. I mean, it even has uh, Terry Gilliam in it. But it's so boring, it's so slow, and nothing else is happening to actually keep your interest during it, that even how crazy it all is, it's just fucking awful. <sighs> what the frick was with the elephant nose guy? What was the point of that? Here's what I went to go see before I went to see Kingsman. I am so glad there's theaters around here that serve alcohol now, because there's no way in hell I would have gone to see Fifty Shades of Fucking Grey if there was no theater around that served, didn't serve alcohol. I got that wrong. I don't care. I'm not going back. I'll, I'll, I'll say this much. It looks gorgeous. Honestly, this is a well-shot, well-put-together film. The story is fucking crap, and the actors have no fucking chemistry. It's just... Words fail me how bad that film is outside of how it looks. The dialogue's atrocious. The acting's mediocre at best. The guy who plays Christian Grey can't act to save his life. And the sex scenes, which are supposed to be the selling point of this film, you're expecting them to be erotic, and they're not. They're, they're frankly rather dry and stale. Jeremy Johns said it was worse than dog shit. It was nothing, and I'd agree with him, except I have seen one film that was worse than that. And this is a film, I know, some reviewers actually liked it. I went to go see it, and as I said, I went through Fifty Sh Shades of Grey. I went through Jupiter Sunday. I've seen The Last Airbender... Transformers 2 and Battlefield Earth in cinema. I have sat through some awfully shit films while in the theater. Never once have I even considered walking out. This fucking film is the only film I have ever even thought about getting out of my seat and just walking out saying, this is not worth it. It's not worth it for me to sit here and endure the pain that was unfriended. I'll admit, pretty much the only reason I went to go see this is because I had some time to kill before I met up some friends to see Avengers Age of Ultron. And I said, you know what? I'll meet you guys at the theater. This film's been getting some decent reviews. Let me go see if it's actually any good. No, it's fucking crap! It's a waste of the digital media that was used to make it. Because it's, you're watching six people, it's technically seven because of a ghost, interact over a Skype session. And it's fucking aggravating because they're not even consistent with the damn thing. Although some people say, oh, it's very consistent. It's like, no, when you switch to another fucking window, the volume of Skype does not automatically diminish. And plus, I swear, like, fun, one point... She shares the screen so her friends can say, Hey, no, see, I can't kick this person. Fucking. And then goes to type to her boyfriend, who's also in the Skype call, but I'm thinking, everyone else can now see what she's typing because she didn't unshare the screen, but no, of course it goes back and the screen's not shared anymore, but uh, considering the aggravating length they're going through to see someone type something and then, oh, no, backspace, and so, then retype it, and oh, God. This film was just so fucking annoying. It doesn't help that none of the characters, none of them, are likable in the slightest. 
so I don't feel sorry when anything bad happens to them. I was actually almost rooting for the ghost at some point, except they're also a miserable piece of shit. I hate... What was the fucking point of this film? I don't get why some people say, like, oh, it's kind of an original like the idea, and that's why they're giving credit. No, it fucking sucks! It was the most aggravating thing I've ever had to fucking sit through. Uh, if there's anything worse that comes out this year, spoilers from a year-end list, I will be fucking miserable by the end of this fucking year. Oh, anyway, all right. I'm going to try to jump cut edit this thing and then put it up. I'll talk to you folks later.